podcast show is brought to you by the Ostrom Group, the best cars in the world. And welcome to the Rob Ash Show. I'm Mick Trell, along with Drake football coach Rob Ash. Coach, congratulations. Another victory this past weekend over the University of Chicago. That makes you 4 and one Well, real happy right now, Mick. It was a tremendously exciting game. University of Chicago was well prepared, and they played extremely well. But our team's pretty tough in the clutch. We came back, and we pulled away at the end. Going to see some highlights of this football game in a moment. And I'll tell you, it was a hard-hitting football game. They are a good football team. Bulldogs had to come from behind at times to win this game, and I think people are going to enjoy the highlights. Well, I think they will because there are a lot of big plays on both sides. Uh, Chicago runs the option as well as any uh, college football team you're going to see. They have some guys who could play anywhere, and they were really ready to play. I thought their defense played exceptionally well, especially early, and luckily we were able to wear them down a little bit and come through at the end. Bulldogs able to uh, use the bench quite a bit, of course, at quarterback, also with the tailback slot, and especially with the weather conditions the way they were, you had to do some different things. Well, the wind was a huge factor in this game, Mick, coming right off Lake Michigan, and it was a very, very strong wind. It really affected the passing game, and that affected us more than Chicago because as an option team, they didn't throw very much, and it did hurt our passing game somewhat, but we were able to get things worked out a little bit at a time, and our running game, our balance really paid off. Should be a good one. We've got some good highlights coming up for you, so don't go away. We'll be back in just a moment. For nearly 40 years, Dave Ostrom has offered Central Iowans cars that set the highest standard for excellence, superior automotive technology, style, and of course, value, plus a commitment to service designed to satisfy your needs. Today, our three dealerships offer an outstanding selection of import and domestic cars. The Ostrom Group. Together, we bring you more of the best cars in the world. Hi, this is Tom Baldwin, owner of Home Team Pizza. That's the only place you can get Des Moines Super Large or Large, that fantastic 16-inch pizza. You already know we make our dough every day from scratch, and so it's the freshest anywhere. And you already know we guarantee delivery in 30 minutes or you get your pizza free. But believe it or not, there's still some people that don't know that our Large or Large pizza with single topping is only $7.99. And it's absolutely delicious. So call Home Team Pizza right now for your Large or Large. Service. Answers. Saving. Our company is smaller now, but the level of service from Holmes Murphy is still the same. When I have insurance questions, Holmes Murphy has the answers. They found ways to reduce our premiums by cutting our risks. Integrity. Service. Advice. Leaders turn to Holmes Murphy. And welcome back to the Rob Ash Show. Well, Coach, let's take a look at the highlights. You know, certainly going into this ball game, you knew it was a team with that was uh, rich in not only talent, but also rich in tradition. Well, they really are. University of Chicago, of course, one of the great academic institutions in our country and a lot of uh, history in football. The gentleman in the jacket there is Jay Burwanger, who's the first Heisman Trophy winner. He did the coin toss at the beginning of the game. And Of course, we played on Stag Field. Amos Alonzo Stag coached at Chicago for 50 years, and I think he would have loved to have had Joseph McCoy here, number nine, running the option. On their second play of the ball game, you can see McCoy, great athlete, just had a super game for them. And, uh, you know, he, they started off right away driving the ball down the field. He wasn't the only threat that they have, though. Frank Baker, number 35, who played both tailback and fullback, is an extremely powerful runner, broke a lot of tackles during the course of this game, and those guys make a tremendous one-two punch. However, after they drove down here deep inside our territory on their first drive, watch the pitch isn't quite handled. Uh, Brad Nemec, number 23, comes up with the fumble. Uh, Matt Garvis helped cause that fumble, so we were able to stop their first drive with a turnover. On our first play of the game, Julian Nathaniel went through a big hole, just about made a uh, move past the safety there, and he just barely got tripped up. But we ended up having to punt on this first drive. You'll see it's about third and 12, and here's a pass from uh, Jamie D'Angelo to Sean Diggs. Watch the sticks here over on the sideline. Right there is the stick, but uh, you'll see the official marks it about a yard short. So. We had to punt, and we had the wind. Now, remember, the wind in this tape is going from left to right. Watch his first punt by uh, Sneller. He got up in the wind, went clear over the safety's head. That's a 68-yard punt all the way down into the end zone, and, and uh, they brought the ball out to the 20. So Chicago had 80 yards to go. Here's uh, 35 is Baker. 
The option's very deceptive, and, and he got through there for a big gain, so they started right away again on their second drive, uh, moving the football back down the field. Three backs in the backfield. Here's an isolation play. They mixed power with uh, finesse all day. 35 Baker, you're going to see a lot of him. I think he had his own personal best and a career uh, best rush in the football. But then they try to pass. Um, McCoy threw a good ball to the tight end. It tipped off the tight end's hands, and Brad Nemec made an interception. So Nemec personally stopped the first two drives by recovering a fumble and then making an interception. That big guy weighs about 300, and he landed on Brad. I don't know if Brad was going to get up or not, but we ended up getting... Uh, big, big turnovers, and we really hadn't done anything yet. Here's a good play by uh, Cortez Hull, our line again, our first play, good run, a little crease there, getting things started again, but we had to punt. So our first two possessions, we had to punt. Luckily, here's another good kick with the wind blowing it. Now, their safety had retreated way back. This was over 50 yards on the punt. Great coverage by Mike Beeman and Tommy Becker uh, down there, and so you know the uh, first quarter came to an end. We missed a field goal here. We botched the field goal try, but first quarter was scoreless, uh, basically because of the turnovers by Chicago and good punting on our part. Look at that big tight end on a little pop pass, uh, carrying people 10 or 15 yards down the field. And then here's Baker again on the isolation play, big, big hole. We stopped him about a yard short, but they tried a couple plays and missed. And on third and goal, McCoy just took the quarterback sneak. I say third and goal is about six inches away, and he was able to get it in for the touchdown. So the first blood, first score of the game was uh, Chicago. They muffed the snap, however, on their PAT. And the guy rolled around here and tried to find uh, uh, somebody to throw to. And look who, who broke up the pass, uh, Brad Nemec again. Three great plays here. And uh, that was already Rainier number 49 also. Six nothing. Finally, our offense begins to get a little bit untracked. Uh, Mike Stanfell carrying the ball there on an off tackle play to get a key first down. And then Roy Fletcher, now playing quarterback, hits Chad Briley on a crossing route. This was a huge play because it was third and ten or so, and Chad was able to get the first down and, and help keep the drive alive. And we're throwing the ball here into this win now. Roy makes a play fake here, rolls out and finds Dave Doran. The ball, the wind blew that ball away, but Dave made a nice catch. And then here we go on our flanker screen, and Chad Briley makes a super catch over the middle. Takes it all the way across the field, gets over the last defender there for an answering touchdown. Uh, that tied the game up at 6-6, and uh, you know it was just a great job by our offense to come back. Watch this kick go up into the wind, though, and get knocked down. Actually, that ball was almost over the uh, the plane of the uh, of the posts there, but the wind blew it back down, so it ended up being 6-6. Six six. Chicago comes right back with another good play by Baker. He ran right through a tackle at the line of scrimmage on a trap, then he runs through a tackle right there. Uh, literally a defensive tackle and, and gets into the end zone for the touchdown. So after a scoreless first uh, quarter, then we got, we've got these touchdowns back and forth, and Chicago went for two and missed it, so it was 12-6. Here's Julian Nathaniel, number 22. Julian had another great game. He's always very powerful at the moment when he's going to get tackled, and he, he got us off to a good start on our drive. Here's Mike Stanfield, one of his best runs of the season, breaking the tackle there, big hole in the offensive line getting way down the field, so we came right back with a possession all the way down the field. However, we, we got stalled out here a little bit, and on fourth down, because of the wind and because of the fact that Billy's kick had been knocked down, we tried a quarterback draw, fourth and three. Fletcher does a good job here trying to fall forward for the first down, but you'll see the measurement coming up just a little bit short. So Chicago got the ball back, and they still had the lead 12-6. to six. It's right before the half now, and we make a big, a big stop. Craig Ortworth uh, stopped the quarterback. They punted to us. And uh, Fletcher throws an excellent pass into the wind. Sean Diggs making a great catch. That allowed us to, to complete another pass, get in position, and then with no time left on the clock virtually on this last play, Billy Willers really had to kick the ball hard to make what should be just a fairly short field goal, but that allowed us to get up to 12-9. We only got the ball back with 50 seconds left in the half, so it was a great job. Here's some of the folks that make this show possible. Second half, we're back in action here. Julian Nathaniel, we had the ball first, and this is one of our first plays of the second half. 
think our team came out determined to try to change things around. We were behind 12 to 9. There's a reverse to Diggs. Big block out in front there, and he almost got all the way down. Just the last guy making a saving tackle. But we continued to drive well. We had a uh, fourth and three situation here where Mike Stanfield ran the ball very well for us. He hurt his knee, unfortunately, on that play, and that was his last play of the, of the uh, game. Julian tried to get in, and we ended up getting stuck here uh, on fourth and goal, so we had to go to Billy Willers again, and Billy hits it with the wind this time, but it was crossing wind, very tricky, and I think both of his kicks were exceptionally good given the windy conditions, and so we tied the game 12 to 12, but uh, it didn't last long. Watch McCoy here on the option. Great burst of speed, and he's running. Tommy Becker's trying to catch him. You can see Tommy coming to the picture here. Tommy's the fastest player on our team, and he couldn't catch McCoy, so I don't think we had anybody who could. So that's about an 80-yard run, 75-yard run for a touchdown. Uh, two plays after our field goal tied the game. So Chicago answered us right away, got back in the lead again 19-12. to 12. So we knew we were in, uh, in for a long second half. On third and 10, on the very next possession, a key play for us. Cortez Hull, uh, look at him keep fighting here. Getting about 10 yards after that he should have been down. That was a key play because if he doesn't make a first down there, we have to give the ball up. Play fake in the line. Fletcher to, to Briley. Briley had one of his best games of his career. That keeps things moving. Got us into a short yardage situation. And then the handoff to Cortez. Great move there, making a safety miss. Stiff arm on the other safety. Get the answering touchdown. So right now we're exchanging scoring, uh, scoring drives here. And it was a big, big series for us coming back from third and 10 to get the drive, keep the drive alive, and then get the answering touchdown. Tie the game up at 19-19. Of course, Chicago wasn't finished yet. Here's Baker again. He just runs through tackles. You know, normally, you can slow people down or grab onto people with uh, the arm tackles, but Baker ran through all that, unless we could get him before he could get started. Matt Garvis on the blitz, Steve Flattery finishing things off. That was a big first down play that put Chicago in a long yardage situation. Third down, we stopped Baker inside, so this is a fourth down play. Watch McCoy, tries to get upfield. He has to get about two yards past that line. We stopped him about a foot short on a key fourth down play and got the ball back. Now Fletcher hits Briley again. Another big play, still tied 19-19 here. Chicago had those safeties back deep all the time, so it was hard to get a big pass play for a touchdown. But we were able to get uh, the drive going. That was the end of the third quarter. And then to start the fourth quarter here, we go with the flanker screen. This was our touchdown play earlier in the game. It works again for big yardage. Chad's able to get all the way across the field here again, keep us moving down the field. And then watch this run with Julian. Great blocking up front on our counterplay. Great blocking downfield by Hoskins and Diggs. And Julian takes it all the way in for the touchdown. Both Julian and Cortez with key uh, touchdown runs here. And that put us ahead uh, for the first time in a ball game, uh, 26 to 19. And uh, that was a great drive, mixing pass and run to get back down and get something going. Again, though, Chicago comes back. Here's Baker with another big run. Seems like he had about 15 of these. Great hustle here by Mike Beeman, number 29, to push him out of bounds at the nine yard line. And that was a key save because here's a series that wins the game for us. There's a fumble on a pitch, good penetration inside uh, by Matt Garvis, Craig Ortworth, and Todd Sauer chase down the pitch man. And then on fourth down, McCoy tries a quarterback draw, and our inside of our line does a great job. Partridge, Sauer, Artie Rainier, defensive line did a great job stopping that fourth down possession. Now there's three or four minutes left in the game, and we decided we had to get out of the hole here. Fletcher passes to Ray Prindeville for a very big play to get us going. And remember, we're facing the wind here. We don't want to punt into this wind if we can help it. So we're trying to win the game on offense. Julian with a good run. Here's a fake to uh, Julian on third and seven. A pass from Fletcher to Hoskins for the first down. Big first down play for us. And then as we drove on down, about two minutes left in the game, we decided to throw against man-to-man -man coverage. Number four is Rich Hoskins taking the pass from Fletcher, and that gave us a 14-point lead with just a couple minutes left in the game. We ended up getting an interception at the end of the game from Mike Beeman uh, to stop Chicago's last uh, possession and ended up 33-19 to the final. I'll tell you what, a heck of a ball game, and I think uh, one more time, the Bulldogs showing a lot of character, having to come from behind. That's a good football team you beat on Saturday. That's right. Uh, Chicago has had a great season. They play extremely well. Baker and McCoy are outstanding backs, and their defense played really hard all day. We finally 
we're able to wear them down. I got to believe one thing. A lot of these teams are saying this Bulldog team has a lot of weapons. Well, there's a lot of weapons, but I think the biggest weapon this team seems to have is the ability to play under pressure. You know, when we get behind, our defense seems to be able to make stops. Offense seems to be able to make drives, and we've been very, very lucky that way. I think it's a tribute to this type of team. I think we have some statistics to uh, look right. out of this football game. Look at the uh, top three lines there. Of course, you know the score, but the rushing yards, uh, Chicago with a great performance, 398 yards rushing. But you see, we weren't too far behind there with 332. We run the ball pretty well ourselves. The big difference in the game, they only had 44 passing yards. We had 212, so we had a great offensive day. And our balance, again, for you know many times it's happened this season, really came through for us. And I know you don't like to talk a lot about individually, but Chad Briley did have a heck of a day. And uh, Roy Fletcher came into the ball game. Boy, they did a nice job. Well, Briley is, you know, he rose to the occasion. He blocked extremely well, had several key catches. And, but it was a balanced team effort. Our protection was good, passing the ball. The offensive line did a nice job. And don't forget, too, the key thing. The defense stopped uh, Chicago on two fourth down possessions in the fourth quarter. That's what wins you games. We'll be back to uh, take a look at our play of the game. We'll do that right after this. His wife Annette, daughters Elise and Marlene, and grandchildren Michael, Risa, and Mikey invite you to join them and all the employees at Home Plastics in supporting the Drake Bulldogs all season long. This fall, there's exciting nonstop action and entertainment when the Bulldogs hit the field. Take your family to all the games. Sam does. There are two names Des Moines can count on Home Plastics and Drake University. To make a great Sunday brunch, start with a great view. Add something colorful and healthy. And don't forget to add something a little sinful. Add something steamy and delicious and really pile it on. Then make sure you add the right stuff, like good friends. Sunday morning at the Capitol View Dining Room. Brunch at the Best Western Starlight Village downtown once, and you'll be back for more. Welcome back to the Rob Bay Show. Well, it's time for our Ostrom Group Play of the Week. Coach? This week's Play of the Week is Drake's first touchdown in the ball game against Chicago. It was a flanker screen to Chad Briley. Watch Chad come across the middle of the formation and watch all the offensive linemen here block their men briefly and then release downfield. Roy Fletcher flips the ball to Chad, who makes a great catch. And I'm going to back out of the picture here so that you can watch Chad come down with the football and then follow the blocks of uh, uh, Phil Smerrick, number 75, and Chris Martin, number 71, all the way in the end zone. Chad jumps over the last defender to score the touchdown and then ends up giving Drake the first score of the game. Great execution by the lineman, great catch by Chad Briley, and Drake's first touchdown in the ballgame. And a beautiful catch indeed. Time for our next feature, of course, home team pizza player interview. Todd Kim, who does the radio broadcast for Drake University, had an opportunity to talk to Roy Fletcher, who did quite a job at quarterback. Our player of the week, quarterback Roy Fletcher. And Roy, uh, out with that injured shoulder that you hurt at the end of that Augustana game, I know you were looking to get back. You, you were hoping for Valparaiso, but you end up coming back for the Chicago game. You said your arm felt good yesterday at practice, uh, and it looked like once you got kept getting more and more snaps out there, you really got confidence. Yeah, you know, I was just I was kind of worried. I was scared if you know if I was going to get hit if if it popped out again, and it didn't. I never really got hit all day. Offense line played really well. And, Oh, it feels good. It feels this, really good. This was a good win for this club. I mean, you, you mentioned you thought it might be another Augustana. We're up and down the field, but the offense really took control in the second half. Yeah, you know, offense came out and played. Defense came out and played. You know, uh, they're a good, talented team. You know, their backfield's really good, and we just came out and played second half and played Drake football. 
Well, I know two things of focus this week against this Chicago team. One, keep the ball away from that option attack that they had. Two, with the deep, too deep zone that they played and the underneath coverage, it was going to be hard to go downfield. So that required a lot of patience, didn't it? Yeah, you know, it was. And that was hard for me at beginning practice. You know, I was ready to go deep. It's just, you know, test my arm. And uh, we got a couple deep balls today, you know, and but we were, we were successful hitting crossing routes and letting uh, our guys do all the work afterwards. Well, you, sh you sure did still get big plays, but you did it by throwing short and letting Chad and Deshaun really run with it, right? Yeah, you know, they're very talented runners, and uh, you know, that makes our job easier. It's a lot easier hitting a little five-yard five uh, crossing route than it is 15, so it's all right. Well, I know another thing that helps is that is that running game, and what a running game in the last few weeks. It just seems like it's gotten better and better as the season's gone on. Yes, you know, they have not A lot of it's due to the offensive line. that They were playing awesome right now, you know. I didn't get hit all day. You know, most of the time there were great holes, and it was we got past the first level, and it was secondary. We had to make the tackles on our running backs, and that's pretty good matchup for us, we feel. I know uh, as running backs will say the same thing. Boy, a great offensive line and the way these guys are playing, that just makes it so much easier. Yeah, you know, we're hitting on all cylinders right now. And so we almost feel like we're fine-tuned. and We're playing almost like we did at the end of last year. And it's pretty exciting. As a quarterback, how much does a great running game help you? Because then that really brings that those defensive backs up. We saw it at the end of the game today. It really brought those defensive backs up. And then you hit them with a couple of deep balls. Yeah, you know, it makes my job uh, easier. Uh, I don't know. We, we complement each other. It makes both of us ease, our jobs easier, so it helps both of us. Mm -hmm. Now talk a little bit about uh, you coming back from the injury. You said you were wondering how the shoulder would react. Uh, what, what, how long did it take? What kind of things did you have to go through to try and come back easy? Um, you know, it was, it was hard. I really wanted to play against Butler, and that was probably the most frustrating thing. Uh, you know, I understand what Jamie went through last year when he missed Dayton two days before. And, he was just trying to rebuild for, you know, it wouldn't happen again. I wasn't out the rest of the season. That was the biggest key. Um, you know, one thing we don't think about, Roy Fletcher, is your running ability. Maybe you're, you're better as a straight <laughs> drop back passer. Jamie's considered maybe the better runner of the two. Yet today, a couple of times, you, you gave the good play action fake and rolled out, and uh, you were wide open, and then you got some nice downfield blocks. Yeah, you know, with me in coverage, you know, we hit, uh, hit Doran a couple times going across. And, then they started looking him up, and he turned his back, and you know he didn't realize I was running ball until I was 10 yards down the field, and you know pretty much anybody can do that, so makes the job easy. Roy's from uh, Oklahoma City. How did you uh, get in touch with the folks at Drake, and what attracted you to the school? Um, they called me one day at school, and I came up and visit, and you know they threw the ball a lot, and. Uh, I was excited. I liked what they showed, and came up. Well, this is really the true definition of wide open football running <laughs> running passing and that's what a, a quarterback really enjoys that type of game yeah you know it makes it was like i was saying it makes my job easy and uh, it's fun it's fun yeah we we had a good time out there we were pre we weren't pressed but we were having a great time the whole time out there you know and that's a wonderful thing about our offense we never get down you know we're always happy it's not happy but we're always together and we feel we can always score and that's really a great thing to have on offense welcome back i know you're enjoying it aren't you yes i uh, I was re really, really excited to come back, and I'm happy it turned out the way it did. Well, congratulations on being our Player of the Week. Thank you. That's Roy Fletcher, our Player of the Week. And, Coach, two quality uh, athletes, two quality quarterbacks, two quality kids. Well, they really are. You know, Fletcher and D'Angelo are both good friends, and I have to single out Jamie D'Angelo at this point in time, Nick, because, uh, you know, obviously he started the game and then after the first quarter didn't play, but I talked to Jamie uh, a couple hours after the game. I said, hey, how are you feeling? And, you know, anything could have been the answer. But he said, Coach, I feel great because we won. And Roy was doing things right, and it was his day, and I'm just happy everything went well. He says, I didn't want to go in there and screw it up because <laughs> everything was going well. When you have attitudes like that on the team, it's a joy to coach. And my hat's off to, to Jamie for the way he's handled it and for, to Roy for the way he played. We'll take a break, and we'll come back take a look at Valparaiso coming up after this. For nearly 40 years, Dave Ostrom has offered Central Iowans cars that set the highest standard for excellence, superior automotive technology, style, and of course, value, plus a commitment to service designed to satisfy your needs. Today, our three dealerships offer an outstanding selection of import and domestic cars. The Ostrom Group. Together, we bring you more of the best cars in the world. delivery time.
lifetime of gasoline, diesel fuel, and motor oil supplies is crucial to Iowa industry. Timely personal service and quality Conoco products at an affordable price that service professionals and their customers can depend on. Parker Oil Company of Des Moines, Iowa. Welcome back to the Rob Ash Show. Coach, before we take a look at this week's coming game, let's take a look at the Pioneer Lake standings going into this week's game. Well, we had some crossover games this uh, in, the, in the league this week that were very interesting. Dayton beat Evansville. Uh, that would be expected, but the score was only 13-6. to 6. Evansville played an extremely great game against uh, Dayton, was inside the 20, I guess, several times and couldn't score. Butler played Valparaiso and won 10 to nothing. So Butler and Dayton, as kind of was predicted earlier, are at the top of the league. But there's some other good games now coming up this week with uh, Dayton playing Butler. And so we're going to see who wins that matchup. And Valparaiso and, and Drake, of course, our game becomes pivotal because we've both lost to Butler and we both need to get back on track. Yeah, good point. Of course, the Bulldogs can certainly help themselves out in the standings with a win this week. Well, this is a pivotal game for us, a key game for us in the conference because both Valpo and Drake are in the same boat. We've both lost to Butler. A second loss would really throw us out of the race. But a win would put us in a position with having Dayton left where you could get back in a tie for the championship. Well, the Bulldogs have had some wild road games this year. Uh, this will be your fourth in five weeks. Yeah. You ever going to come home? Well, it's, I wish we could, Nick. Uh, we play well at home. We'd like to be back home, but the schedule makers came out with that kind of formula, and uh, hopefully we can get by. You know, we'd like to get by this game with a win. If we could do that, we would have had a tremendous start given the schedule, and then three of our last four at home, that could be real exciting. you got a good little quarterback in rail. He, he is really one of the top-notch quarterbacks. Well, this guy has been the player of the week in the Pioneer League two times already this young season, and he's a great passer. They do a million different things on offense. They're very difficult to stop. They've scored a lot of points. Butler shutting them out last week was a huge surprise to all of us. Must have been a, uh, you know, a, a tough day for him. Uh, he had three interceptions, so hopefully we can get him to make a couple of mistakes, but I'm not anticipating shutting him out. 40 returning letter winners from last year for Valparaiso. They're a physical type of team. Uh, team compared to anybody that we've played so far? Well, I, unfortunately, I, I compare them to Butler. Uh, you know, they played Division II ball in, in uh, Butler's conference in the last several years. All their guys are used to that level of competition. They're very big and physical, as you said. They played Butler 10 to nothing, you know, head to head, very good uh, football game. And that has me concerned because Butler played us extremely well. But I think our team is ready for that jump. Our team's ready to get back in Pioneer League competition, and I think we'll play better than we did against Butler. Well, let's talk about the Bulldogs for a moment. Right now, Drake is playing as well as they have all year. They have a couple of tailbacks, a couple of quarterbacks. Hopefully Mike Stanfield is going to be back at fullback slot. Bulldogs playing well right now. We're playing real well right now, Nick. I'm very happy with that, and I think it will be tough for somebody to stop us, but uh, it's not just an offensive thing. I think our defense is playing extremely well, too. In spite of the fact that Chicago had some yards, I'm going to give Chicago credit for those yards. Our defense is tough, and I think we're particularly tough against passing teams, so I'm cautiously optimistic, let's say, going into this game. Most of these road games have been shootout at the OK Corral. Do you look for another high score? I probably, you know, I mean, Valparaiso has had some high scoring games and some a lot of offense, and obviously we have too. I hope we can be high scoring against their defense. I think their defense is better than some of the point totals they've given up this year. So we have to plan on trying to score some points. Roy Fletcher should be back okay. Injury situation? Mike Stanfield's questionable. He hurt his knee in the game against Chicago. We've got to hope he's back. Fletcher seems to be healthy, and if we can get Todd Lee back at defensive tackle, that would really help too. Win would certainly be nice. It would be great. See you back here next week, and okay. we'll see you back here as well on the Rob Ash Show.